Good day. Selamat datang and welcome to the virtual colloquium by Institute of Teacher Education, International Languages Campus, or better known as IPG KBA, with the theme, Humanizing Teaching and Learning, the Dynamics of Language Education in the Waves of Global Change. I'm Hakima, your moderator for today's session. Welcome to the 12th session of Virtual Colloquium, and I hope you will stay tuned till the end of this session. Today, we have a speaker from the Southeast Asia, but his heart is always close to Malaysia. Our speaker has been to Kuala Lumpur in 2019 as an MTCP IPG KBA participant. However, before we get to know him, let me lay out a few housekeeping matters. First, everyone who attends to this webinar series will be given an e-certificate for after each session. Therefore, don't forget to register yourself and make sure to type accurate email address. The registration link is pinned at the bottom of this YouTube channel. Uh, next, there is uh, no question for today's presentation because it is recorded. However, you can always uh, Post your questions later. Hopefully, the speaker will be able to answer your questions when he reads it. And finally, we would like to encourage you to share today's webinar with your social networks. Now, ladies and gentlemen, allow me to introduce our speaker for today. Mr. Saprola Diporos previously served the Ministry of Education from 2008 up to 2015 in Davao City. He has vast experience as the principal of Wisdom Islamic School and Public Government Schools, all are situated in Davao City, the Philippines. He is currently pursuing his PhD in Educational Administration in Bandung, Indonesia. His affiliation is impressive too. Mr. Diporos is the president of International Student Association in his university, and he also is the president of the Filipino student community in Indonesia. Ladies and gentlemen, without further delay, please welcome Mr. Saprola Diporos. Good afternoon to everyone from Bandung, Indonesia. And allow me to greet you the greetings of Islam. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuhu. I hope that everyone is okay today amidst this pandemic. I know that everybody is uh, having a hard time, you know, like having this kind of uh, health crisis that we have. But inshallah, may this humble presentation of mine can support our prior knowledge to be awakened again and strengthen our capacity to deliver more and to be part of the best change of our society or institution. Of course, we are doing this one to us, uh, for us to be able to uh, deliver any knowledge that our society or our institution can be uh, uplifted and developed. So today we are going to discuss the topic aligned with uh, the title Empowering Language Teacher Through Teaching and Learning. So our mantra for today is an empowered teacher believe in himself or herself so basically our topic today will be uh, how to empower teachers through how to empower language teacher through teaching and learning so whether you are teaching arabic language indonesian malaysian language english arabic filipino language whatever languages that you are teaching this uh, presentation is for everyone so uh, being part of the academy as teacher and as part of administrators of our school, which is Wisdom Islamic School, located in Davao City, Philippines. One of the missing parts that I observe to our teachers today, even though they are very good, they are very uh, eloquent, for example, of, the, of their craft, but then the problem is they have this uh, missing part, which is empowerment. We need to empower ourselves to empower others. So we as teachers, our children, our students, our pupils, for example, they need us. So with that, I think these uh, things are already enough for us or the reason for us to be empowered. So I hope that everybody are okay today for, uh, because uh, we are going to tackle the very important thing that uh, might actually help ourselves as a teacher, as a professional teachers. How are we going to make our class, how are we going to make our um, lesson more appropriate to our 
uh, students or clientele. So the coverage of uh, this presentation, number one, we have, of course, brief self-introduction. My, so I'm going to introduce myself to each and every one. And then photos of my work, workplace because before I was a teacher in a public school which is uh, under the government of course we are going to give you some photos of my uh, old photos from my previous school and my present school which I am uh, teaching today so some photos also when I was part of the MPCP uh, 2019 before the pandemic that was if I'm not mistaken the last week of August and the first week of mid of August until the first week of September 2019 and then we're going to talk also the general issue pertaining to the topic and then uh, we are going to move on to the lesson proper and then I'm going to give you a basic example uh, in line with the topic that I am going to uh, emphasize or share to each and every one of you. I know that this topic is not uh, is not that new to everyone. Maybe we just have to uh, make it properly understood because these terminologies, the pedagogy, these uh, pedagogy terminologies are uh, sometimes misunderstood and misused by some of the teachers. Even me myself, before I have some confusion with this uh, pedagogical. Uh, um, terminologies and then we're going to give of course uh, after example we're going to conclude and then we're going to give you a question and answer uh, portion for us to be able to have at least a um, interaction and then uh, that's all the coverage for my uh, presentation this afternoon so of course my name is Sapro Laroli Kali Diporos I am a licensed professional teacher um, I am a PhD candidate. I am actually studying at Universitas Pendidikan Indonesia or we called it the University Education uh, in Indonesia located in Bandung, uh, West Java, uh, West Java. I am uh, taking uh, educational administration and um, in terms of working, I am working at Wisdom Islamic School. I am their school principal since 2016 up to the present. Before uh, I am part of Wisdom Islamic School, I was actually a former uh, a former public school teacher. I'm teaching in Don Juan de la Cruz Central Elementary School located in Turil District, Davao City, Philippines. And of course, after, uh, if I'm not mistaken, after five years, I moved to another public school, public, element, public elementary school, which is in Santana District in Zonta Elementary School. So basically, I was a public school teacher uh, from 20, 2008 up to 2016 and then from 2016 and uh, until now I'm a part of Wisdom Slam School as their principal or part of the administrators and um, um, I graduated my bachelor's degree in University of Southeastern Philippines uh, and then after that one well, this is actually in Davao City and after that I uh, pass the licensure examination for a teacher that was 2008 and then uh, a year after I was able to you know uh, uh, get a scholarship program uh, offered by University of Brunei Darussalam and then after that I took my master's degree in Universitas Muhammadiyah Surakarta or Muhammadiyah Surakarta University that was 2016 if I'm not mistaken 2016 because uh, during the time that I am studying, I uh, know during the time that I am, uh, you know, like teaching in public school, I did a what you call this one, a, um, a study leave. I was able to, uh, you know, like study abroad while I am connected in the government. So I uh, finished my master's degree, majoring educational administration in Indonesia also. Um, after that, I took Dharma Siswa. It's a one-year course. It's not an it's it's a non-degree uh, course. We are just you know like uh, studying the culture and language of Indonesia, and that is that was one year one year uh, program. And then after that, I took my uh, PhD in uh, Universitas Pendidikan Indonesia, this university. That I am actually uh, you know like. Uh, you know, being part of this university right now. And then I had an exchange student program in uh, Yogyakarta State University, still in Indonesia. But uh, there are some, there are some uh, program that is 
uh, funded by Malaysian government that I actually joined before the MTCT 2019. I joined MGPS Batch 5, which is Mahathir Global Peace School 2017. That was um, a collaboration of Indonesia and Malaysian government. And then uh, the venue of that, uh, you know, like almost two weeks international conference was in Indonesia. That was in Muhammadiyah, Yogyakarta University. So basically, that's the you know the basic information of myself okay these are the photos that i've worked uh you know i've worked with then and now so before uh, if you're going to see in your screen in the right side uh, these are the photos taken in wisdom slam school and the left side are photos taken in don juan de la cruz central elementary school and of course in zonta elementary school so i am not an english major teacher actually but an Arabic language teacher. So basically before when I was in Brunei Darussalam, I was able to teach Arabic language in uh, Jirudung Arabic School. That was part of my internship. Uh, it's a five months uh, teaching uh, experience that I had when I was in Brunei Darussalam. In fact, I taught uh, also, um, what you call this one, in uh, Indonesia before in Solo or in Surakarta, an Arabic language also in Muhammadiyah. Jogjak uh, Muhammadiyah Surakarta University in uh, PESMA or we called it Pesantren Mahasiswa. So basically I teach Arabic language more than English language. And then um, although I am more into Arabic language but I also teach English language especially now in Indonesia I have this kind of tutorial to some college students and it's a personal program. You know it's a personal offering uh, English speaking class to my friends and other students who need assistance to improve their speaking skills. So basically, uh, if you see uh, my uh, education, oh, no, <coughs> excuse me, my um, work uh, background, I am more into, as what I've said, Arabic language, but I also teach English language for speaking skills, something like that. So basically, uh, I am more into uh, other subjects in terms of teaching but let's go for the topic that we are going to discuss today so these are the these are the um, what you call this one the photos you know taken uh 2019 uh, we had mtcp 2019 held at uh, ipg kba the program inspired us to, in, to be empowered as an educator because our neighboring countries like malaysia did their job you know well in terms of you know education in terms of providing quality education to their nation if you see um, these photos was actually taken last 2019 as what i've said from several uh, schools and uh, some universities also i was you know like uh, realized the importance of uh, education because if you see our neighboring countries uh, like malaysia they were able to give quality education to their students so i'm a, li a little bit envious with that because um, if the if Malaysian government can do this one, why the Philippines cannot do this? So basically, these are one of uh, the inspiration. That's why I am uh, pursuing my PhD for me to be able to impart some knowledge to my constituents way back in the Philippines. So, first thing that we're going to talk is how to empower oneself. Um, an empowered teacher knows what is his passion what is his direction he knows what to do and he knows when to make something and he knows his craft this one of the few descriptions of empowered individual so basically as teachers we uh, when we when uh, we accept our responsibilities as educators we know uh, we know we need to learn <clears throat> self esteem is necessary uh, that's why uh, you have because you have the dignity, you have the high morale and confidence of yourself. Basically, you have to believe in yourself that you can do more, you can provide more, and these can only be taken when you know what you are doing. There's a lot, there's a lot of factors, of course, when you empowered yourself. For example, if you see this quote, the strongest factor for success is when self-esteem, believing, uh, you know, the strongest factor for success is self-esteem, believing you can do, uh, and believing you deserve it. And believing you get it so you have to build your self-esteem so of course there's a lot of factors to empower ourselves but to be specific 
one of the factors uh, is knowledge. You have to be knowledgeable of your uh, whatever things that you are doing, especially we as a language teacher, we have to know what we are doing. If we have adequate knowledge of our craft, for example, we have satisfactory information of something, for example, our craft and profession, then that is the best step to gain confidence. We have to remember that not all teachers have this personality. Not all teachers have a very good, you know, like strong uh, personality that can, uh, you know, able to face whatever circumstances that he may face, you know, along the way in his uh, journey as a teacher or as an educator. So from now on, you have to try and be one of those beneficial teachers that needed by your community. So basically, we have to empower ourselves through knowledge. Knowledge is power. That is really true. We need it because they need it. If you're going to see the faces of these children, why, why teachers must be empowered through knowledge? Because if you see these children, they are dependent to us. So how can we you know, be able to educate them if we are not empowered through education? So that's why knowledge is the main reason why we want to teach. Okay? Without knowledge, of course, teaching is not, it's, it's not possible. We, you cannot teach anything if you don't have adequate knowledge. So we need to acquire good thoughts, good or enough information, enough experiences, and theoretical understanding in any subject that we are focusing on, although we are focusing on language uh, subject here. So therefore, you need to know your craft as a teacher. You need to know your uh, craft, your profession. You need to be skillful enough. So that you can show your full potential and make the clientele or make your students or make your uh, uh, learners you know, benefit from you. According to Abdul Kalam, uh, learning gives creativity. Okay? Creativity leads to thinking. Thinking provides knowledge and knowledge makes you great. So what do you mean by that? You have to learn to create. Okay? Because when you create, you are thinking. And when you are thinking... You want to provide something, right? So, and when you provide something, you make yourself great. And you make other people great. Therefore, knowledge is an essential factor to be a good educator. That's why I told you earlier that one of the factors for you to be able to be empowered, you know, uh, educator is to have an adequate knowledge. Now, there are some, you know, like issues in terms of uh, teaching language. There are some glitches faced by teachers in teaching language. For example, in English or Arabic, uh, there is a disturbed environment of the class. For example, lack of teaching resources. For example, uh, a large number of students in the classroom, incorrect syllables of to teach. For example, language barrier. We have this one, especially for example for me, when I'm teaching English and Arabic language. When I, when I was in Indonesia, we have uh, you know like this language barrier. And then limited time for teaching. I also uh, experienced this one when I was in the public school. And then we have students' passiveness. Some students are just like waiting, you know, or whatever, uh, like spoon feeding, uh, if we are going to say that, that way. Students are bored and not interested in learning. And then we have also classroom management, pro uh, classroom management problem. So, uh, disturbed environment of the class. Sometimes this kind of stuff. Why is it that students are disturbed, you know, inside of the class? There's a lot of reasons. For example, like maybe uh, the teacher have, you know, this kind of problem in terms of teaching resources that makes the students, you know, bored, for example. Or maybe a large number of students. I remember before when I was in, in the Don Juan, uh, Don Juan Central Elementary School, I remember we have, if I'm not mistaken, 1 is to 50 because I'm teaching grade 6. So... They are the higher grades in elementary level. So one teacher equivalent to 50 students or more, you know, not, not more than 55 though. But these numbers of students while you are teaching inside the class, it's really, really huge. So that's why we cannot, um, sometimes you cannot uh, avoid that our students are or disturbed or are disturbed because of these numbers, huge numbers of students in the classroom. And sometimes, for example, there are, we can call this one like teaching by chance or you were forced to teach this specific subject even though it's not your field because you are lack of teachers in your institution. So limited time for teaching also. Um, uh, let's go back first to incorrect syllables to teach. 
there are some teachers who were given uh, loads, okay? teaching loads, which even though it's not their um, strength, it's not their major. So because we have lack of teachers, for example, in our school, so the principal or administrator will give you, uh, you know, the task to teach to your students or pupils, for example, or learners, for example, even though you have a hard, uh, hard time with it. So that's why some, some of the reasons why the students, some of the problems that the teachers are facing in this kind of situation is the incorrect syllabus, you know, in teaching. So they don't know if the syllabus that they are teaching is still correct or incorrect. And then limited time for teaching. Uh, of course, there's a lot of reasons why is it that we have this kind of stuff, especially if you are in dual uh, education school. For example, if your school have dual uh, curriculum, for example, if you are, for example, in our school, in Wisdom Islamic School, we have this um, Islamic and Arabic language curriculum. At the same time, the curriculum given by the Department of Education in our country, which is the K-12 program. So basically, for you to be able to, you know, have or to offer all these subject matters to your students, you need to divide the time properly. So basically, instead of giving... 80 minutes for English language, you will just give them, uh, let's say, 50 minutes because you're going to divide those number of minutes to other subject uh, matters that uh, the student should uh, take. And then language barrier. For example, if you already, you know, like, um, experience teaching, and uh, you know, like, no, what is, how can I say? If you experience already teaching English, uh, outside your country, for example, you will, you know, really experience this language barrier. So these are some of the glitches that we are actually facing. And then students' passiveness. As you know that uh, today is the era of technology, mobile age, for example, students are really not into a type of traditional uh, learning, type of traditional, you know, traditional type of teaching and learning process. So sometimes the students have this kind of mentality, you know, being passive, whatever the teachers feed them, they will just take it, something like that. And then the students are bored and not interested into learning. Uh, this is very common. And then classroom management. If you're going to see all the glitches faced by teachers in teaching language, all of this uh, is, are actually into pedagogy, into curriculum and school management system. So, Basically, all these contain or inclusive in the basic concept in teaching. So we have the teaching approach. We have uh, the teaching method, techniques, and strategies. So basically, these are the straightforward strategic answer to our problems uh, that we that uh, I already told you earlier, the glitches faced by the teachers in teaching language. And these are the proper lesson that, uh, that I want to remind everyone. That's why I told you earlier that this is not a new... Uh, topic that we are going to explain but something that uh, to review okay to make uh, our knowledge properly uh, arranged for example if I may say that one and then um, through this humble session for sure even though how many years we are teaching profession we are in teaching profession we are still confused of these terminologies um, we may find different theories and ideas, but for this presentation, I want you or I want to emphasize the differences and basic understanding of the following pedagog pedagogical terminologies. But before that, we need to know the definition of teaching first. So earlier, I told you about the possible answers faced by the teachers in the classroom. So we have this, uh, the educational competitions, of course, we have using multimedia during lecture, designing good syllabus. We have conversation periods between students and teacher, which I always do that one in my class. Teaching through games, for example, good classroom and timetable management, and motivational session. Usually, motivational session is uh, you are doing this one um, randomly. So, as what I told you earlier, that all these uh, you know possible answers faced by teachers in the classroom, uh, you know, setup, all of these are inclusive. Uh, to the uh, topic which is um, about approaches, methodologies, techniques, and strategies in teaching. So what is teaching? Of course, teaching, there's a lot, there's a lot of meaning 
of uh, teaching. So according to Othonel Smith, teaching is an arrangement and manipulation of a situation in which gaps or obstruction of an individual through engagement. So an individual lean by engaging or an individual learning by engaging in a problem solving and that he or she is motivated to learn by uh, involvement in an unsettled state of affairs for uh, which he has uh, he has not ready there's no ready-made response if i may say or a solution so basically to engage and direct your learners in problem solving that is the you know one uh, one of the meanings of teaching another one is adaptive process from mature to the new one this is very common in which for example we as teachers we are teaching our students in elementary high school or even college students so the contacts are to be intimate and designed to advance the education of less mature people to no to mature people to the less one okay this is the development of the individual through the learning and defined as adaptive process the last one according to othonel smith teaching is impartation of knowledge so it is a character of lecturing so if we say about character of lecturing, this will go back on how we deliver, on how we impart our lesson or knowledge to the clientele or to the students or learners that we have. So from that, we need to know what is the purpose of teaching? What is behind this word? So basically, what is the objective of teaching or teaching's objectives according to Freeman, Dr. Freeman Williams III? Good objectives in teaching is hitting the target that is a uh, very uh, practical explanation of course if we do not have or if or if we do not make definite plans about what we intend to accomplish we will accomplish little or nothing for for all our efforts and time so to hit the trajectory to reach the goal and to accomplish the plan because without reaching the plan then there is no uh, there's no point of teaching. So, marks the good objectives. Number one, we have brief enough to be remembered. When you are teaching, with all the activities done by the learners, they need, they need to, you know, they need enough keywords, for example, to remember. So, make it brief. Or, for example, if you have, you know, this very big definition of something, you just have to take the the keywords of that one you have to formulate the best uh, description for them to be able to remember another one is specific enough to be achieved okay so it should be achievable this is actually part of um, smart if i may say smart uh, specific measurable attainable so achievable not too much but not too small and then uh, made in terms of student behavior this is very important make it aligned to their behavior so there are people who are cultural oriented there are institutions that are into religious belief for example example in saudi arabia in brunei Darussalam. some are secularized also okay they actually separate the religion and the you know uh, in terms of their educational uh, um, affiliation so some are secularized and some are in the basis of their faith and traditions so make sure that all these are according to their behavior or another thing is Make it sure that it is according to their capacity, their behavior as an individual. That is why we have uh, the term SMART, which is uh, specific. We have measurable, attainable, result-oriented, and what is the time-bounded on teaching. So basically, you have to understand the objective of teachings, which I already, uh, you know, we already uh, emphasized earlier that it should be brief enough to remember specific enough to be achieved and made in terms of student behavior so basically you are going to think for the number three you're going to think what is the behavior of the students uh, how old are they for example so the the system of your teaching uh, strategy or the system the teaching approach that you are that you have to use must be according to the behavior of your student so let's go to the lesson proper so what i told you the lesson proper that we are going to uh, you know have uh, this afternoon as a teacher due to many works of course especially in the public school that has been given to us sometimes these terminologies okay these terminologies that was common for educators became confusing for some reasons 
Sometimes because of lack of practice. I believe so. Sometimes lack of understanding. And today we will try the best. Okay, we will try our best to review and explain its differences. To understand it more in order for us to use it properly when the pandemic is over. Even, you know, online, you can, we can still use this one. So basically, the lesson that we're going to emphasize this afternoon is all about the teaching approaches, teaching methodologies, teaching uh, techniques, and teaching strategies. We're going to give the definition of this one um, a sort of simple, uh, what do you call this one? Simple um, example. And then simple description for us to be able to understand these terminologies, pedagogical terminologies. Number one, number one we have teaching approach. Okay. Uh, for teaching approach, when we say approach, that is an act of getting something. That is an act of getting close. Okay. A way or path that we are going to go with. And pedagogy, teaching approach is a set of principles, a set of beliefs, or ideas about the nature of learning which is translated into the classroom okay so uh, meaning to say uh, something that you think is possible to use to reach your objectives in teaching and on its example for example if we see if we see the you know the monitor we have here learner centered approach where students are actively involved they became independent with the guidance given by the teacher and the teacher acts as a facilitator. Basically, this is more on oneself uh, belief. We can say that teaching approach is a way of looking at teaching and learning. This is your personal uh, philosophy in teaching, for example. So that is basically the teaching approach. Now, what do you mean by teaching um, methods? What is teaching methodology? If you see, it is a systematic way of doing something. It implies an orderly logical arrangement of steps. It is more procedural. That is very true as what we've told you earlier that make it more uh, you know, easy to remember. If you say teaching methods, it is a way of doing something. It, impl it implies an orderly logical arrangement of steps. It is more procedural in which the teacher chooses the procedure to teach some material so they can learn it in an easy way. For example, investigatory method. We say investigatory, uh, investigatory method, you have to provide a lot of opportunities for the students to participate in classroom activity. You, ha you have to focus greatly on learners' active involvement. If we say investigatory uh, method, it is de-emphasizes the teacher's uh, you know, authoritative role in the classroom because more of the teachers are very authoritarian. You know? uh, all of the things must you know, come from you, especially for us, like 90s kids. Uh, some of the experiences that we experienced before uh, was the teacher is more, you know, dominant to the students. For now, nowadays, we are not doing that one because we have the teacher learning, uh, teacher uh, learning approach that we are that we already uh, explained earlier. Okay, and then uh, we have experience in investigation uses scientific method. So basically, uh, teaching method is more on procedural. So moving on to uh, teaching techniques. What is teaching techniques? Um, as you see in the monitor, we have here also techniques is a well-designed procedure, okay, to use for an activity. These are such steps we follow when we teach. This is the teacher's style or trick to accomplish an immediate objective. This is more into applications or implementational. One of these examples is research, study, and pair work. So now, let's have, you know, like, um, of course, we're going to wrap up this one later on. So if we're going to see the difference of methodologies and uh, techniques, uh, the key word for this one, if, it, if, you, if you talk about uh, teaching methods, this is more procedural, okay? If you talk about teaching techniques, this is more into applications or implementational. Okay, moving on, uh, that's why here, let's go back first. We have here that the research, for example, we're going to give you um, some uh, uh, further explanation about the research. Of course, research is a very big uh, topic that uh, we, are, we can, uh, you know, this time, 40 minutes is not actually uh, enough for us to talk about that one. But basically, one of the techniques that we can use for uh, teaching technique is the research. And then the last but not the least is teaching strategy. If you talk about teaching strategy, as you see in the monitor, <clears throat> it is a plan that ensures the efficiency of learning. 
these are the methods of approaching the problem or task. So modes of operation for achieving a particular end or plan designed for controlling and manipulating certain information and of its examples or uh, its examples are think, pair, and share. I want to say is that um, it is a plan that ensures the efficiency of learning. These are the methods of approaching a problem or task. Modes of operation for achieving a particular end or plan designed for controlling and manipulating certain information and which example are think, pair, and share or small group discussion. So therefore, we have to remember that our teaching strategy is identified through our teaching approach, through our teaching methods, uh, through our teaching method use, methods used, and uh, techniques. So basically, teaching learning process, we have this, uh, you know, common concepts to understand. We have teaching approach, as you see in the monitor, a set of principles, belief, or ideas about the nature of learning which is translated into the classroom. It, it's your belief, personal belief as a teacher. And then a teaching methodology, okay? From, uh, from approach, from your personal uh, philo philosophy in teaching, you have here the me uh, methodology, which is more on procedural. It's a way of doing something. It, is implies, it implies an orderly or logical arrangement of steps. It's more on procedural, as what I've said. And then the techniques, which is more on applications or implementational. It is such, uh, such steps we follow when we teach because it's more in implementational application. It is the teacher's style uh, or trick to accomplish an immediate objective. We have also the teaching strategies. Uh, our methods, uh, strategies are methods of approaching a problem or task. Uh, of operation for achieving a particular end or plan designed for controlling and manipulating certain information. If we talk about the difference of teaching techniques while, uh, I mean, teaching techniques and strategy, because it's already uh, cleared for us the difference of methods and techniques. Methods, as what I've said, is more procedural. Techniques is more into implementation or application. So, the difference of techniques and strategy. Techniques is, uh, strategy is the methods we use you know, in order to facilitate our students' learning. So it's more on creativity. Now I'm going to give you some um, example, okay? Uh, but before that one, I just want to em emphasize that uh, the following teaching concepts, okay? For example, the teaching approach, teaching method, teaching techniques, and strategy. Uh, the following teaching concepts are, uh, are for example, our approach relies on someone's belief. Methods will be more on procedural, where it will give you the step-by-step -step process, okay? And then techniques will be more on application or implementational, while strategy is more on the methods we use in order to facilitate our students' learning. So, if we are still confused of this one, we can actually go back to that one later on. So, for example, we have this one. Uh, the example of approach, methods, techniques, and strategy. As what I've told you earlier, that um, the, the procedure in teaching, for example, whatever strategy that you are doing, it should be aligned from your technique, methods, and approach. For example, in uh, our approach that we've, we thought of this learner-centered approach, of course, there's a lot of method for that one. What kind of procedural uh, method or what kind of procedural things that we can actually do? If we have a learner-centered approach, I can use investigatory as what I've given you earlier. And then, the technique that I'm going to do is research, study, or pair work. And then for the strategy, I can, I can give a uh, think, pair, share, or small group discussion. So basically, if you see this uh, example, all of these, uh, you know, like terminologies and concepts are in line with each other. You cannot make a strategy which, which is not in line with your technique so another one if you are teachers uh, teacher centered for example if you are you know like doing the old type of teaching so maybe the methods that you're using is lecture which is very common and then the technique can be symposium it can be talks for example now i'm just talking and then the strategy that you're using is the whole class discussion and whole class presentation and so on and so forth if you see the approaches, for example, the constructivist approach, uh, that's one, one's view or a teacher's uh, view, for example, in teaching. And then the method 
that the teachers will do is activity and then the technique that the teacher will do is role play or dramatization i actually did this one when i was in indonesia until now i'm actually doing this one you can give for example a script uh, to your students to uh, memorize or to familiarize and then they're going to dramatize or role play that one during your class and then the strategy for you to be able or for them to be able to do that one is think peer and circle or peer evaluation meaning to say uh, if you're uh, uh, because if we if we talk about constructivism um, constructivism is more on uh, students build up you are going to build uh, uh, build up the prior knowledge of your students. You are basing on their prior knowledge. You're building up the prior knowledge of your students. So basically, the method that you are going to think is activity. What kind of activity? What kind of technique? It can be a role play. So before they can do the real play, the strategy that they're going to do is think pair and circle. So they're going to, you're going to group them. You're going to peer them, for example, and then make them uh, understand and give them the guidelines for them to be able to do the techniques which is the role play that you are going to uh, you know implement and then the last but not the least that i'm going to give the example is the mle or multilingual education so multilingual education is a mother tongue base okay it uses more than one uh, language for example if you are outside your country you have to use english uh the, the language of the native uh, students for example and your own if you can actually uh, use that one in some way for example what kind of methods you're going to use it can be direct or indirect it's a teacher-centered students will observe me to say each it is a teacher centered and then the students will observe that is the uh, direct and indirect um, what do you call this one indirect method so what techniques that you're going to use of course, it can be talks or it can be symposium, for example. So the strategy that we're going to do, for example, the plan design in controlling certain information is the whole class discussion. It can be whole class presentation or think, pair, and share. So basically, as what I've told you, the strategy should be aligned to your technique. The technique should be aligned to your methodology and your methodology should be aligned to your approach. And I have to remind you that there is no single best approach methods techniques and strategies that applies to all of course uh we don't have you know stuff or things like that this will depend on your philosophy your belief and capacity of your students for example and nature of the subject matter because there are some techniques there are some approaches that is maybe applicable to these uh people okay or this is not or uh, but this is not applicable to other people or other group of students so basically you have to see it will depend on the philosophy the environment the, the the culture of the people of course these are the things that you are going to um consider before doing the um what we call this one the teaching uh, strategies or teaching approach that you are uh, implementing in your class Okay, so therefore, if we aim to be an excellent, remember that excellence is a character, it is not an ability. So basically, um, the skills is the unified force of experience, intellect, and passion in their operation. So you have to remember that if you want to be an excellent, uh, you know, like a uh, language teacher, you have to characterize these uh, attributes, for example. You have to do your task well, you have to read, you have to uh, make sure that what you are doing inside the class uh, is basically aligned with the culture, aligned with the, uh, the pedagogical procedure for them to be able to grasp the knowledge that you are actually giving them. <clears throat> so basically, uh, from this kind of information, you must have a self-assurance because self-assurance reassures others. This is very true. According to the study, self-assurance is two-thirds of success. So to learn and gain self-assurance is to reassure others. So basically, we are teaching, we are learning this very common pedag pedagogical concepts, not because um, it's um, we don't know it, but we are uh, reminding ourselves again and reviewing these concepts for us to be able to have a self-assurance for us to reassure our uh, learners. So from that, thank you very much for listening, and um, this is uh, this has been SAP.
You can call me Sap or Sapolo Roni Caldiporos from the Philippines studying in Indonesia. Thank you so much and wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. If you have some question, you can uh, raise your question uh, right now. Please be reminded while we are waiting for the questions of our, uh, you know, like friends out there. Uh, this um, session is more on like a review to everyone. Maybe you can find some uh, theories or some um, ideas, the, you know, the differences or, uh, well, how can I say, the, maybe they're saying that the strategy comes first before the technique. Actually, it doesn't matter. Okay, uh, for example, like, of course, as what I've told you, for example, your approach is constructivist. And then your activity is, uh, you know, your method is activity methods. And then it can be the strategy, of course, the peer evaluation or think, fear, and circle. And then the technique that you're going to do is role play and or dramatization. It doesn't matter. And sometimes also, this strategy can be uh, manipulated. You can actually uh, change this one while you are in the process of, uh, how can I say, while you are in the process of, uh, teaching because sometimes there are some circumstances that is happening inside your class which is unintentional so from that uh, you know perspective for example you have to you know uh, have this quick mind for you to be able to change the strategy that uh, you are going to um, emphasize or you are going to implement inside the classroom there is one question here uh, ask let me uh, read first the question. Here's the question. The question is... What's the question? The question is um, this one. The question is how do you deal or how do you do let me uh, read first properly so that the question will be more uh, you know comprehensible the question asked is Even me, I actually like don't understand the question. Uh, maybe the question that he wants to emphasize that how do you able to um, catch up? How do you able to um, teach in Indonesia where you have this kind of in, uh, language barrier? Uh, language bra barrier. So as what I told you earlier, that when we are teaching. As long as we know, for example, the, uh, the pedagogical concept, the teaching concept, I think we didn't have any problem with that one. For as long as you know the process, you, for as long as you understand the capacity of your students, for example, um, you can actually make a very simple approach and uh, a very simple methods, techniques, and strategy that is aligned you know, to their culture and their capacity as a student. I think you don't have any problem. Practically speaking, what I'm doing in Indonesia as a, you know, a English uh, speaking, English speaking coach or English speaking uh, class that I'm doing, what I'm doing is like, I am uh, explaining them, you know, using English language in a very uh, simple way. I'll make sure that the, the, the terminologies that we are using in front of them is comprehensive, very understandable. And then you have to mix a little bit of their uh a little bit of their uh, own language which is Bahasa Indonesia so basically you are going to uh, have this MLE approach which is you are not just using one language but you are using several languages for them or for you to be able to deliver the, uh, the materials or the subject matter 
that or the lessons that you are going to emphasize so i think uh that's all for uh today thank you so much for uh listening uh i hope that these things for example can be uh can give you you know like enlighten you for example because these pedagogical or teaching concepts are very very important we have to remember again that teaching approach is more on your uh, philosophy and then methodology is more on procedural your techniques for example is more on uh, implementational or application and then strategy is the methods we use in order to facilitate our students learning it's more on creativity so thank you so much for that if you have some question you can actually raise that one through our youtube channel uh, that will be posted by our uh, what you call this one our organizer thank you so much ipg kba for inviting me and thank you so much also for wisdom slam school for giving me the opportunity to emphasize or to give uh, some little knowledge of mine even though uh, you know we are still in the process of learning of course we cannot give you all the details that you need uh, for this particular uh, subject or for this particular topic which is empowering language teacher through teaching and learning because 40 minutes or one hour is not enough but i hope that in the future we still have this kind of uh, very um, educational uh, um, conferences even though it's uh, through online or via online uh, it's not a hindrance for us to learn and uh, for us to be able to meet again one day in flesh so from that this has been Sam uh, from the Philippines uh, teaching in Wisdom Islamic School studying in Universitas Mindigan Indonesia or the Education University in Indonesia a licensed professional teacher a PhD candidate thank you so much wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wabarakatuh Thank you, Mr. Sapurla de Poros, for the sharing and also answering the question. So if I were to conclude from this session, Mr. de Poros argues that teaching requires teachers' personal practical knowledge. Each strategy planned and executed in the classroom was based on the teacher's personal practical theory. And that, ladies and gentlemen, concludes this webinar. We're not going to take uh, questions anymore at this, as this session is recorded. And uh, all I can say is thank you so much for your participation, for your comments, and we hope you have learned and enjoyed this ses uh, session. I would like to thank our speaker, uh, Mr. Diporos, the studio director, Sheikh Sharul Azli, uh, Azhar Ali, the producer of EduWeb TV, Dr. Suras Kanagasabai, the Educational Technology Division, Ministry of Education Malaysia, and also the webinar rapporteurs. Jumpa lagi, see you again, and goodbye from Kuala Lumpur. Thank you.